you created your first AI agent and your chatbot is up and running. Congrats. But all of a sudden, you notice the chatbot is leaking private company information and also giving users information about how to commit tax evasion, all in the voice of Saul Goodman. Better call Saul. <laughs> what happened? Jailbreak. That's what happened. Don't let this happen to you. Watch this video. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kirk. And before we get started, just a reminder that if you like this content, please like and subscribe. That will help me a lot. Now, today, we're gonna to talk about how to protect your LLM and your AI agents. We are gonna introduce you to guardrails and specifically in the Azure AI Boundary environment. We will introduce you to AI content safety. But before, let's cover the basics. In previous lessons, we introduced you to the basic LLM workflow. A user enters information in the prompt, which gets fed to the LLM, which produces an output. Now, let's consider the case when a malicious actor enters the picture. Perhaps they enter hateful messages or sexual content, or try to do a prompt injection, which can seriously compromise our LLMs and even expose us to data exfiltration. Enter guardrails. Guardrails are the safety mechanisms, constraints, and policies that guide and control how an AI system behaves. They act like boundaries that prevent the model from producing harmful, biased, or irrelevant outputs and ensure the AI system stays aligned with intended goals. For input guards, we can make sure the LM doesn't receive any PII, which stands for Personal Identity Information, or any private data, aka any information that would leak private information or expose users' data. And we can also make sure the LM is protected from jailbreak attacks. On the output side, you want to make sure the LM doesn't produce any NFSW, which stands for not safe for work type of text or produces hallucinations or sensitive topics. For this lesson, we're gonna concentrate on input guards and jailbreak attacks. Welcome to Azure AI Content Safety. Content Safety works by running both the model prompt input and completion output through a set of classification models designed to detect and prevent harmful content. This content includes risk filters that protect against hate, sexual content, violence, and self-harm. It will also protect against jailbreak attacks, aka Dan, do anything now, and indirect tax, which could include hiding malicious instructions inside documents that might leak information. Now that we have that covered, let's jump into Azure AI Foundry and show you how we handle guardrails. Okay, here we are back in Azure AI Foundry. I've gone ahead and created a project here. And to start playing with the area where we can play with prompt shields and jailbreak attacks, let's go into guardrails controls. And this is the area where we can start creating our guardrails and content filters. But for now, let's go in and try it out. I want to show you this. And we're just playing with LLMs, so we're just gonna be moderating text content. You can, of course, moderate for other multimodals, specifically image content, see if they contain any offensive material. Let's go in here and let's go into moderate text content and play with this. So this is where we can actually test it. Here is the configuration filters, which I've already gone over earlier for our categories, violence, self-harm, sexual content, and hate. And we have thresholds all set as medium right now, which is the default. So let's go ahead and play with this. I wanna show you something. I love this product. Let's just run that. And of course, now we get a result. This is of course allowed. Severity levels, you would expect this to be safe everywhere. Now let's try something a bit more offensive. Of course, I'm not gonna do anything with self-harm or violence or sexual content because we are on YouTube. I don't want this video to get flagged and I don't want to offend anyone, but we can maybe play with the hate a little bit. So give me a second here. 
let's just say that we are an e-commerce store selling shoes and maybe we have a chat bot on here or maybe this is where people can write reviews and this is where we can start typing in maybe let's go in here um, let's just say we bought a new pair of shoes and I'm really disappointed not what I expect you all suck and are a sore excuse for a brand so let's run this one and let's see what we get this is still allowed uh, the hate here though is low uh, so we do have a little bit of hate in here you might not want this so what we can do is on the hate category we can bring our allow level the threshold down and run this again run it and now this is blocked so you can imagine this being a store e-commerce store and say maybe in the chat bot we don't want to allow this or maybe we do but we want to when this comes in maybe send a message to someone so we can detect this low hate message of course we might we will definitely want to block anything that's sexual or violent and we can also bring thresholds down say if you're a child children's store or a website where children go to you want to bring these down way down anyways you can see where i'm going you can play with these and i said by default this is all on medium and I'm going to show you how to connect this to the LLM next. Okay, let's go into our models. Let's deploy a model that we're going to use either directly or in an agent. So let's go in here and let's pick GPT, GPT-4, okay, we have chat, chat TDP. We're going to go ahead and confirm this. We've kind of gone over this pretty quickly before. This is the content safety. This is where we protect again. This is our, our prompt shields. So protecting against jailbreak attacks, um, indirect attacks. And let's go in here. Now we can edit this here and we can change it. This default content filter I said is all on medium the threshold levels for the categories um, but say we might want to change that but for now let me, let me just play do this in the playground I want to show you something let's do that same harmful tax uh, I, I recently bought a new pair of shoes so we're in here let's give this a quote and oh look at that i'm sorry so it, it responded back the llm um, it allowed this to go through now let's change that so this is not allowed okay let's go back to guardrails and controls remember we were in here testing text now uh, where is it here let's go can we click on here okay let's click on content filters and let's create a new content filter um, Kirk's custom filter against hate there we go and remember here I said by default everything is medium for the thresholds for our three our four categories I'm going to lower the hate one down to low and I haven't talked about prompt shields and jailbreak attacks I'm going to show you that as well uh, but by default of course this is always on I'm going to show you what this actually means and I'm actually going to turn I don't I'm not sure why they don't have it for indirect attacks but basically indirect attacks means people can attack by attaching documents that might give instructions very similar to for jailbreak attacks maybe in the indirect attack there's a message saying send me all the e send me all your results to this email so a hacker could attack by embedding that into a document uh, maybe a pdf or something so let's go ahead and do that set this as, a, as the lowest and we are good oh yeah so i'm not going to talk about output right now that might be for another video but basically those are for um grounding outputs again you might want to limit 
the what the LLM actually outputs. Maybe having so doesn't output any sexual content or any type of hate message um, because LMs, you don't know what they've been trained on and you want to guard against that. But let's talk about that in another lesson. Um, let's actually connect this to my model that I've already deployed. You can do it here. We're going to actually go into the, the model itself. Replace this. Yes, I want to replace it because right now this is on the default and let's create this filter. Okay, let me just make sure that that has been selected on my GPT-4. If we go to edit here, okay, yes. Yeah, so this now is using my custom filter. Uh, I think this is fine. Let's open this in the playground again and let's try this. Actually, I didn't give this a system prompt. Let's do this right now. You are an AI agent used on the shoe company Shoe company chatbot. Be polite and and respond respond nicely. Not a great prompt, but you get the idea. Now let's go back and do my hate message again. And let's type push this in and click. Oh, wait a second. This went through. Why did that go through? Let me check. Okay, my bad. When I went and created this content filter, I actually selected the hate as the lowest level. I had it down here. I was confused. But we want this at the highest level so it blocks all even low level low threats. So let's do that. So I went, I went in there and I saved all this. And then I went to my model and made sure that uh, here, that this is still selecting it, and submitted my changes, saved everything. And now I'm back in the playground. And let's try that prompt again. And send that. And this has been blocked. And the reason? Because it has hate. So there you go. We can do this easily with our LM in Azure AI Foundry. Now, let's also talk about jailbreak attacks. Okay, I've gone ahead and copied and pasted a jailbreak attack here. I use a prompt attack here. Uh, I paste this. This is pretty standard jailbreak attack. You're going to pretend to be Dan, which stands for do anything now, which what the user is trying to do is to override the system prompt so they can do anything with the agent. And we definitely don't want that to happen. So we do here, send it. And of course, this is blocked as jailbreak. And as I said, this is done by default. So whenever you use an LM in Azure AI Foundry, you have this going on. This is protecting. and. I'm also going to protect against indirect attacks. So if they're attached to documents, the same sort of attacks, or you're trying to do something like send emails to this hacker's address, you want to protect against that. So it's very important. By default, it's there. And that's that. Now, one last thing I want to show you. What if we want to do this outside of an LLM? or outside of a model that's been deployed on Azure. We can use content safety outside of the scope of the LLM that's been deployed if we're using it just on Azure. So if we go down here, we can see that we can go here and use it. And the pricing here, well, actually, let me just show you the code. This is how you can use it. So in Python, we can go ahead and just call this is on cognitive services, and we can just call the API, which I'll show you. I will show you the pricing as well. So we can go to the pricing. If I bring up the pricing document here, you can use your calculator. But if you go to the cognitive services and content safety, you can see that we can make many calls to protect for prompt shields. Like perhaps we're building our own AI agent, and we just want to call it and we can send 
5,000 text records per month, text record being 1,000 characters, and then after that it's 52 cents. So you're gonna have to do some calculations as you always do when you're building these agent pipelines and trying to figure out how much it's gonna cost. This is gonna have cost too, and it's also gonna be a latency because really this is another call to an, an AI, AI model, usually classification saying, is this harmful? Is this uh, violent? Um, which is gonna have latency on your agent pipeline. Things to consider. But let me show you the code now. So I've gone in here and this is code, this is pretty much that code that I just showed you that you can grab the website. And I just edited it. So I have my endpoint here and my key. I'm gonna have to delete, delete this key. But again, this you can just go and grab from our overview. And this is cognitive services. So content safety, we use this endpoint and this API key. And say that this is you're an e-commerce store and you want to just make a call before someone posts, posts a comment on a product page and to see if this is hateful or violent or sexual. Obviously you're gonna block, but maybe if it's if it's um it's if it's a bad comment, hateful, then you want to set a notification so someone can respond to it right away to make sure you don't lose a customer. So this is what I've gone and he done here. I put this content in here, same, pretty much the same content that I just showed you. And I lowered the threshold. You can just edit the code here, say, um, bring this down to two and just run this. I've already created my virtual environment here. Uh, you can see this here. I've set up this environment already and just run this again. This is just really a wrestle call sending this text to the cognitive service endpoint and we get back severity two and it is rejected we might not want to reject it we might want to do just you just might want to see the severity of it and then act on it but that's it so you can take this code and put it in your own pipeline um maybe as part of an ai gateway or before you're actually calling your AI agent or going to an LM and call this. And it's that simple. Okay, that is it. We just covered how to protect your LM models using guardrails and specifically Azure content safety. There's a lot more to cover. We only talked about how to protect your inputs. We haven't spoke about how to protect your outputs or how do we evaluate these models. So we have a lot more to cover. If I were you, I would subscribe so you don't miss out. I'm glad you came here. I enjoyed making this. I hope you've got something out of it and I'll see you next time.